emergency. Prejudice. Wrote a song about it? Like to hear it? Here it go. Free your mind. in a state of emergency. Prejudice. Wrote a song about it? Like to hear it? Here it go. Free your mind. Yeah, I'm right here. Yeah, I'm right here. Okay. My my mouse went out on me. My mouse went out. I have one of those uh battery operated wireless mice. You know, the mouse for the computer. Mm -hmm. It went out on me. Mm -hmm. And I don't I can't get the thing open. I have to change the battery in this thing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, like I told you, I don't really have a lot to say. Mm -hmm. uh, on that topic, I mean, you covered it, you covered everything. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. All I can say, really, is again, uh, we need to take our destiny in our hands. And the only way I can see that uh, becoming a reality is the step by step uh, program uh, suggested by what I call. Operation Exodus Mississippi. And for those of you who are not familiar with that uh, uh, campaign, that plan, that solution, the real solution that we need, 
subscribe to Operation Exodus Mississippi and 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 and, and study it. Don't be emotional. I mean, the same way that you study history 5,000 years ago, 100,000 years ago, whatever, study something instead of being emotional. All oh, that, blah, 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 blah. That's, that's bias. And really, you're doing yourself a disservice. You're, you're actually hurting yourself. I don't mind critique. I don't mind somebody telling me, oh, you're wrong. This won't work and blah, blah, blah. But don't do it in ignorance. People come to me and when they have a problem with what I call the Mississippi campaign, they do it in ignorance and just silly. If you break it down, what is wrong with the Mississippi campaign? Except you don't like Angel Snuffing Up 7. You don't like the fact that uh, God is not going to get the credit. Kemet is not going to get the credit. The more size temple is not going to get credit. All your favorite young pharaohs not going to get the credit. That's really the, the, the whole problem. Because there's nothing wrong with the Mississippi campaign. It was something our people were naturally doing anyway. Had they been left alone in the South, we probably would be in control of the South. Had they been left alone, but that's not that didn't happen. And uh, the wicked at the time made sure it didn't happen. And the and the federal government pulled out the troops so th those idiots could terrorize and do what they done. So I don't mind. I don't mind critique. That don't hurt me. What bothers me is when people speak in ignorance. So I. Uh, Ask many of these persons, what's your solution? What's your solution? I send them to the uh, website, Operation Exodus Mississippi. I send them to the website. I don't hear from them no more. And the reason why I don't hear from them no more is because they have nothing to say. They just want to continue to do whatever they're doing, which is, which is, which is, it's not taking you. It's not getting us nowhere. Biden and Harris is not going to get us nowhere. Uh, 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 Obama and Biden didn't get you nowhere. Trump is not going. None of these plantation owners or managers or overseers is not going to get you nowhere. Their job is to maintain the plantation, and really, that's regardless of color. The focus is on us, but actually, every person in this country ain't nothing but a damn slave. Getting up every morning and go to work. The, 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 the highway is so crowded, you can't hardly get to work. It's so crowded. Folks going back and forth, trying to get to their slave plantation, and your corporation or your slave master making billions of dollars, and you get a little, little tiny taste. But you're the one, and I'm the one that really do the work. That's a slave plantation. The ones who actually do the work don't really benefit. That's a slave plantation. Those people that you admire, let's let's my favorite is Michael Jackson. During the time of thriller, it is estimated that Michael Jackson made 50 million dollars. Okay? Now to many of us, woo! Michael, $50 million. Wow. Michael Jackson, during the time of Thriller, the best-selling album in history. They got a lot of other crap out here trying to knock him off his throne. But Michael Jackson, Thriller, the best-selling album in history. Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson, that album, Produce over a billion dollars in revenue. I'm going to say that again because I don't think you heard me. Any more than I don't think you heard me. Thriller produced over a billion dollars in revenue. Michael Jackson, the one who is the talent, the one who is the one that caused all this, only made 50 million. I'm not good at math. That ain't even 
one percent of a billion. I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. Fifty million is not even one percent of, of a billion. Michael should. Michael should be. Michael should never in in his life, no matter what he buy, unless he unless he trying to buy the planet Earth or something. He should have never had financial problems. That one no. album. Yeah, that one album produced over a billion dollars of revenue. These basketball players. What's his name? Uh, LeBron James and and uh, may he rest in peace, Kobe Bryant and all these people. Mm. You look at and even these rappers, somebody like Jay-Z and Beyonce. If Jay-Z and Beyonce mm. is worth a billion dollars or whatever, what do you think their handlers are making these record companies, all these people that they're associated with. They're not making the money. They're nothing but slaves on a plantation. Oprah Winfrey, y'all look up to her and think she got, she's a slave on a plantation. <laughs> even, even though she owns her show. But she, she owns her show, but she don't own CBS. She don't own the, all these, all these, she don't own the vessels that make it possible to put your face all around the world. She don't own that. She got to pay for that. That's going to come out of her slave money. Mm. So it don't make any difference. All these people getting ready to go to work. A lot of white folks, y'all say, got these good jobs at these car factories or whatever. They slaves. They're not making the, mm. the, the real money. And when they get upset, you see them out there. I'm on strike, protesting or whatever. You should not want to live in this type of environment anymore. You should not want to be a slave, regardless of your race, regardless of your, your gender, or any of these things. The Mississippi campaign is the catalyst to show us a different way of life where you need to learn how to live and be free Instead of being a damn corporate slave. Mm -hmm. Every morning, everybody dragging and fighting, trying to get to their slave plantation. You work so damn hard, you barely can get a vacation. Some of us never get a vacation. No matter how hard you work, you don't get a vacation. Your vacation, mm -hmm. when they send you to the moor. That's your vacation. Yeah, my, 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 store manager, my, my store manager hadn't had a vacation in four years. See what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. And you still and you still not you still not getting nothing out of it. Yeah. It all goes it all goes to the to the master. It all goes to the ones in charge of the plantation. I posted a video on my channel uh, that I mirror from a, bro uh, a brother. Uh, you can you can agree or disagree with his commentary, but he before his commentary. He had this little cartoon talking about the management of the slave plantation, giving the slaves the illusion of inclusion like they was free. Just like Sister Noble was saying earlier, uh, you think that Trump or Biden is better than Trump. None of these suckers are better than none. They all the same. And you get your little vote. And they make you believe like you're part of a process. Make you believe that you're part of this. You're not part of nothing. Your voice means nothing. It's an illusion. <laughs> so, I suggest that. That's why I don't talk. I have never talked politics on my uh, platform because I'm not interested. I will use the Democrats, I will use the Republicans, I will use the voting system in order for it to work for me so I can benefit. But these now, Negroes ain't, ain't doing that. These Negroes ain't doing that, though. We can do a lot of things mm -hmm. as individuals. I'm talking about we as a people, the masses of the people, have to be guided and shown a different way and show that they can, they can benefit. But our, our popular YouTubers, and our so-called leadership, they don't have it going on. They have no idea what to do. 
Ark says it's best to work for yourself. You work for yourself and you still pay another man for water. You still pay another man for electricity. You still pay another man for YouTube. You not, you're not, you still a slave. Again, that's feel you don't good. Own the land. That's you don't own the land. You don't own nothing. It gives you the illusion that you're not a slave and you are. And you pay taxes, you still pay the taxes to the slave owner. You still got to pay yep. the slave master for your permit and everything. In order for you to have a business, you got to ask his damn permission. Mm -hmm. Now, back in, the day, yeah. <laughs> now back in the day, yeah, back in the day, you got to pay, you got to, you got to, you got to pay for property taxes. You got to pay sales yeah. taxes, yeah. rent, everything. All these other permits, all these other permits that go along, people think I work for myself. I work for myself. I still have to end up, I still got to give Every year you got to file that. What is that? The, 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 what's that? The 10th? The, w two, huh? W two. No. W two. Not when you work for yourself. Oh, it's, 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 oh, it's oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's the another form. It's another form. Yes, another form. I think it's. Uh, I think it's the ten forty. I think. I think. I'm not too certain. But I'm not. I forgot what it was. But yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't have to pay taxes. And they will let you slide, but really become successful. And all that you thought you was getting away with, you're going to have to pay. They're going to come down and bust you up because you're still on the plantation. So, yep. In Egypt. <laughs> this is not Egypt. Maybe, maybe, you <laughs> maybe you can do that in Egypt, but in America, it don't work that way. <laughs> I suggest. You get out of Egypt. I suggest you get out of those Egyptian clothes. Get on board the soul train. And let's do, let's do, let's do the real. That's that's how we need to do. So take your destiny in your own hand. And I will be talking about that. Soul Liberation Day, December the 7th, 2020, 4:30 p.m. on the real on the reality temple on Earth channel. Um, the topic is take your destiny in your own hand. Now, I want to I want to uh, talk about this subject real quick. I want to get your uh, feedback too, sister. Now, I'm not going to mention any names. What is the best solution to not be a wage slave or slave at all? By changing, by changing your environment, the Mississippi campaign, subscribe to Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign channel, YouTube channel, and learn about the Mississippi campaign right there. Do not, do not be biased. Do not be prejudiced. The same way you study history, talk about Egypt, the same way you talk about what happened 55,000 years ago and what happened 100 million years ago, whatever, take the time and really listen to what is being said and let your brain analyze what is being presented to you. Now, again, I want to get the sisters... Uh, Feedback from the sister here. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to mention any name, but it has been brought to me that there are persons who we know, that I know, mm -hmm. and they have um, fallen out with each other, these two persons. Okay. Because somebody voted for. Biden and somebody voted for Trump. That's how the oh, conversation. Oh that's Lord! How the okay. Oh, and they Lord. end up going back and forth, even to the point where they call the, call somebody out of their name and blah blah blah. I don't like somebody, these are these are folks we know. Yeah, these are the people that we know. Hmm. You know, first of all, it's very disappointing. That somebody 
that will listen constantly and have a, you're supposed to have a certain mindset when you come to this platform, I would think. It was a troll that came to me and told me, uh, uh, you lost all your crew. You know, talking about Maurice and, and Craig and Bacar, you know, all those, those guys. I don't have no crew. I don't have no gang. I have people that come with their various ideas and they and they and we speak and share those ideas. I don't have to agree. Because I, I don't talk politics on my channel. Sister <laughs> Noble can come on my channel and talk about Biden and politics or whatever she wants to talk about. I don't do that. Now you want me to comment on that. Now you know I don't talk about those things. And I tell you, I will. If I tell you I don't even want to comment on it, why would you get mad when you know that's not what I'm about anyway? Wow. You want, you want to talk about it, then talk about it. But don't expect me to talk about it because that's not what I'm about. I've been on YouTube since 2007. I don't I don't do that. I don't care about Republican, liberal, and, and all this other, the, the left and the right and in the middle, whatever. I don't care about all this stuff. I want to get off your damn plantation. You can do whatever the hell you want. Or either I take some of that plantation and make it my own, for real. And that's what we want to do here. Now, so they want to drag me into their conflict. Well, Talit, we had this and this, this your boy, and he said this. And the other one said, oh, this your boy, he said that. You're not going to drag me into that. That's your business. Dr. Neely Fuller Jr. said, and he gave us the advice. Dr. Fuller said that black people really need to stop talking to each other because we idiots. <laughs> you don't know how to talk to your brother. You don't know how to talk to your sister. As soon as somebody says something that you don't like, I kill, I hate you, and all this other stupid garbage. I don't have time for it. And you're not going to drag me into that. Into that that's between... That's between you two. Because here, you're supposed to have grown to the point where it don't make no difference what you believe or your opinion. We should be able to understand. You should be able to laugh it off. Well, you know, you know how Brother Taliki, Taliki is. And just laugh it off and keep rolling and going about your business. We are united on reality. We are united on what we really need to do, the reality of our situation. We are united on that. Regardless to our own little personal opinions or whatever, we are grounded on reality. But you should be mature enough when you're talking to your brother or talking to your sister, when you disagree, oh, brother, you know, if you want to vote Biden, I understand. That's cool, man. You want to vote for, for Trump? That's cool. Now, I could, I could get involved in that little conversation. I could tell both of them, both of y'all crazy as hell for voting, period. <laughs> now both of you going to be mad at me because you don't see nothing wrong with voting. And now both of you going to get angry at me because I'm telling both of you, y'all crazy because I wouldn't vote at all. <laughs> but see, that's you. And I respect your choice. If you want to do that, that's your choice. It do not hurt me. If you want to vote for Biden, or if you want to vote for Mickey Mouse, or whoever you want to vote for, if you want to praise Jesus, whatever you want to do, do not bother me. If you want to be an advocate, if you want to be Donald Duck, I don't care. Do not bother bother me. I said, oh, hey, brother, he, you know, he think he's Donald Duck. But we want to, I want you to get on board the Soul Train. Bring Mickey and Pluto and all the rest of your Disney characters with you. And, you know, just laugh it off and keep rolling. I'm not going to get involved in that because I'm beyond that. Don't get try to get me caught up in that 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 silliness, that foolishness. Because I could always, hey, what's up, Metro Phone? Because I could easily get involved, and now all three of us hate each other. So how does that benefit us? 
Now you're angry at, at so-and-so. How does that benefit you? It does not benefit you or me or them, nobody. It makes us look bad because we're, we're talking about a black conscious community do this and a black, you ain't no damn better. Silly just like they are. They can't get along. They fuss and fight. They do the same thing. So don't get me involved. Now, if you want my advice, I would suggest that we shake that off and go to one another and say, hey, man, you know, you have the right to your opinion. I got the right to my opinion. But we on board the soul train. Well, you need to unsubscribe to Angel you because that ain't what he he do or whatever. I don't vote. I don't. I don't talk about voting at all. So it don't. You know. So I. So as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I don't support voting. Period. Waste of time. But if that makes you feel good. And that's what you want to do as a as a grown adult. That's your business. I don't control your life. I'm not your slave now. I'm happy that you can get on the soul train. But see, this is the problem. When we get involved in other things, then we don't give our heart and everything we can into that which will actually benefit us. So if you want to vote or you want to do this and that and that, and don't put your, your blood, sweat, and tears and heart and soul into something that could change your condition, now I've got a problem. But I'm, not, I'm still not going to send that to you. That's your business. I'm hoping that I would get people that will help me get this train on the track. And I will give you what you earn, which is nothing. I'm happy that you come here and talk. That's all they want to do, talk. Talk for hours. I don't want to talk for hours. You're not doing nothing to cause this train to roll on the track. You just want to talk. I don't want to talk. I can do that by myself. Matter of fact, I can talk to myself. But don't, don't, the problem is when you answer yourself, that's when that's when you have a problem with insanity. <laughs> that was trouble. When you, when you can talk to yourself and then answer yourself. Actually, I don't see nothing wrong with that either. You're just doing that out loud instead of in the mind, in the brain. So it's sad when we can't talk to one another because we have a difference of opinion. I don't have I don't have a crew. I invite people on my platform and allow them to say whatever they want to say. I don't control nobody. I'm not their leader. I'm not, I'm, you know, whatever. I'm not none of those things. So uh, those men was allowed to come to my platform. But see, they had, they had a, a, a arterial motive they want to try to change somebody, convert somebody. No, no, no. I don't do that. I told you I'm not an African. I told you I'm not into Pan Africanism. I told you I'm not a Muslim. I told you I don't care about that God crap. I told you what I'm about. You don't like it? Keep rolling. They know was part of the crew. They know what I was when they came to. I did not search none of these people out. They found me. I did not go to their channel. They came to me. I'm doing my own thing. They came and found me. I did not find them. All of them. So they know what I was about. But they believe they want my voice. They want me to they want me to be able to, to uh represent the garbage that they believe in. And they think they can convert somebody. It's not happening. So keep rolling on out. Keep doing your fizzy. I'm not changing. Don't try to convert. I hate people when they try to convert somebody. When I told you what I am. Don't do that. And I never, I never told people 
to not be who or what they believe they want to be. You never hear me say that. You want to be a Christian? You can ask Sister Noble. <laughs> Sister Noble was a Christian for a long time. Yeah. I never told her. They can, she they can come pray. straight to me. They can come straight to me and ask me. And I, I never, can tell. I never, I never told her not to be a Christian. Matter of fact, I went to church with her. And met her pastor and people at the church. I never told so her don't. I, I, I never told her you, you shouldn't go to church. You shouldn't mm -hmm. believe in that. I never. I never. Yeah, he did. never. He never told me that. He never told me that. He never told me you need to stop going to church. No. He actually came to Atlanta and he came to church with me and met right. my pastor. Right. And you know, and he said she was a nice lady. You know, and he listened to everything my pastor said. You know, he didn't he didn't go right. off on her. He didn't contradict her in front of her face. Nope. He didn't do none of that. He was very respectful of my pastor. I do remember that. Very respectful of my former pastor, you know, and I, a lot of a lot of folks, you know, would not have come to no church. If they said they wasn't no Christian. They damn sure when they came to no church with you. You know, yeah. they wouldn't they wouldn't came to no church. I, I don't care if they was trying to get with you. They still wouldn't have came to, you know, to no church. If they mm -hmm. wasn't into that. They wouldn't have came, period. Yeah. But, you know, brother came out of respect for me. Yes. He didn't have to come. He came out of pure respect for me. And it wasn't no ulterior motive because a lot of y'all, you know, y'all be thinking somebody have ulterior motives like y'all. See, a lot of y'all got ulterior motives. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you do shit out of, you know, these ulterior motives that you got. But right. this brother right here didn't have no ulterior motives. You know, him and I have had many arguments right. concerning the Bible, concerning <laughs> hell, concerning heaven, concerning the afterlife. We've had many arguments. Crap outside religion. You know, many. <laughs> yeah, I, even outside of religion, we had we had arguments. You know, but we still talking to this very day. Still right. talking. And even though I, I was mad at him for a minute. Still came back, you know, this brother, you know, okay, you know, he's a good person. See, that's the, see, that's what y'all fail to realize. He's a good person. See, a lot of y'all ain't good people. A lot mm -hmm. of folks, I say a lot of folks ain't good people. The mm -hmm. Bible said all men are not good men. That's true. Because mm -hmm. in fact, I believe there are more evil people in the world than good people. That's just my honest opinion. I believe. So. I just so, had to put in my two cents, but continue. Well, I. We're not going to get nowhere <clears throat> being divided. You know, we can't talk to, to one another. As soon as I say something you don't like, we're going to get angry. And it, uh, that's very immature. It's very silly. And you're only doing yourself a disservice. You're only hurting yourself because if you really believe that this country is going to fall, a lot of you believe in the fall of America, and you think, and you you you're preparing for the chaos and the mayhem uh, that's going to come or whatever. Blah blah. If you really believe in that, as an individual, how long you think you're going to last? In a in a in a situation where there's total chaos and mayhem, and there's no law and order, as an individual, how long you think you can last? Let's say, for instance, you're an individual. And you got all this water stocked up in your house. And you got all this canned food and you got all this stuff. How long you think you're going to last if somebody find out and figure out that you got that? And you got all these hundreds and hundreds of people running around starving to death and they know that you got a little something, something. How long you think you're going to last? You only got a certain amount of bullets. You can only stay awake so long because... You got a lot of hungry people. They're going to be at your door constantly trying to get and mess with you 24 hours a day. You're going to have to go to sleep. You're going to have to fall. As an individual, you're not going to last long. You and your little family, five, six, seven, eight, maybe 10 family members, if you can get them together. In the black community, we can barely get two family members together. How long do you think you're going to last? As soon as somebody find out. And, and you got to throw your trash out. You know, you eat, you eat real good. You, and stuff. You gotta throw the trash out. Somebody's gonna see me throw. Hey, they got something in there. Hey, hey, what's up? What's up? 
The only way you we're going to be able to survive is to be unified to the best of our ability and pool our resources. If we can't do that, then we become feeder fish for the big fish. Mm -hmm. That's all we are. We're there the is no unity right now. No but unity. Because a lot of folks are divided right now. Piranhas. So that's all we're going to be. I mean, it make you feel good with your little pop gun, your little AK-47, your little chunk, black militia. That's feel good stuff. These folks out here got real stuff. Rocket grenades, dynamite. They blow you to bits. Drones. You ain't on their level. You can't get on their level because you're not organized. You can't get your stuff together. So the only thing you're going to do is be the little guppy to feed the big fish. All that black power, hotel, pan up, that's not going to help you at all. Mm. And even if, even these suckers that think the same can't, can't get along. I showed a video where they talking, they can't even get along. Start cussing about your mama. You know, I haven't heard that in a long time since I was a little boy. You know, when you're little and people get mad, your mama, your grand, your grandmama, your greasy grandmama. That's what little children do. I hear grown men getting these little arguments. Your mama, your great grandmama, your daddy. I'm like, what? I can't, I can't really believe I'm hearing what I'm hearing. These are grown men, close to 40 or older. Your mama, your grandmama. So got to get it together. Mm -hmm. You got to get it together. And we got to come together. You got to stop tripping on your differences and your opinions and your personal belief. You have to concentrate on that which will help you change your condition. Because I'm going to tell you, when you're dead, don't, oh, that don't mean nothing anyway. Your comedic don't mean nothing. Your pan-Africanism don't mean nothing. When you're starving, don't when you're starving, don't have no food. And, your, and, and this cracker turn your electricity off and your water off, all that stuff don't mean nothing. I'm a Pan-African. You, you, you're, you're a starving one. You're a thirsty one. And don't so say it can't happen because right now it's happening in North Korea. Don't say it can't happen because it's happening right now in North Korea in 2020. Okay? Continue. You know, go ahead. <laughs> You know, those conditions are happening all over the world right now. So with the breakdown of, of the American, whatever you want to call it, this system, and put yourself, and see y'all so comfortable the way that you live, you can't even take it. You used to three meals a day. Look, even the poor people in America are fat. That means y'all eating good. <laughs> because real poor people ain't don't can't get fat. It's impossible. Yeah, food it's is like, plentiful. Food, food is plentiful in the United yeah. States right now. Yeah. yeah. Right now. <laughs> There's no such thing as a poverty person. <laughs> Y'all eating really, really good. As a matter of fact, not, not, not only are you fat, really, you're obese. And you talk about, I'm, I'm, I'm poor. You ain't that poor, you fat as hell. <laughs> you're obese. How the hell is that possible if you're that damn poor? You think about so eating good. Yeah, you eating good. Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. you know, the majority of oh, people yeah. are going to be eating good as hell. Even mm -hmm. if they have to eat out of a trash can, they're going to be eating yep. really, really good. Even the homeless. Even the homeless. They get a for Thanksgiving. <laughs> they're going to be real good Thanksgiving. Yep. <laughs> sure and do. Chris, they get a Chris, meal. The homeless folks and, and, the, and the unemployed folks, they get a meal for Thanksgiving, honey. Yeah. And Christmas. Now, in, these countries, in these other countries and situations, they're not getting a, a damn thing for Christmas. Because they don't have enough food. Because they, yeah, they don't have enough food. Period. Like don't, yeah, don't have it like that. You, you, you are used to electricity. You know, you get your little water. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, what's that they give you wings? A little drink? Give you, you know, drink that. And give you, wings. you know those wings yeah, on your back? Yeah. You around. See, you got it going on like that here. Oh, yeah. Somebody made mockery of me, told me I had an old-fashioned fan. I can't afford uh, air conditioning. First of all, yeah, I, don't yeah. like, I don't like air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Never have. I only use enough mm -hmm. air conditioning 
to stop me from sweating because I got to get up and go to the plantation or something. Yeah, yeah. I don't like air conditioning. Anyway, I never have. I don't hardly use it in my car. I don't like air conditioning. Mm. See, you used to air conditioning and heating the house. Y'all living it all good and comfortable Negroes. That's your problem. And that's what's going to, that's why you're going to catch really, really a lot of hell. Not because there's a lot of hell, because you, you're so comfortable. Mm, mm, mm. You're not really used to being poor. I mean, you call that, but you're not used to really being poor, down and out for real, suffering. But things change. Things change. And just like the coronavirus, <laughs> they can change almost overnight. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're in this situation. Like, how the, you be scratching your head. How that happen? Mm -hmm. It was coming. Didn't you get the memo? <laughs> Shout out to, to the Ankh and, and uh, DD. I think that's DD in the chat room. And uh, uh, Metrophone. Uh, thank mm -hmm. everybody for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. It's, it's always an honor that you would allow us to have a little bit of your time. Really appreciate it. All right. All right. Well, good night. And we will see you later. Mm -hmm. Peace. Peace.